Welcome back to Bitcoin Advisors. My name is Chris, bringing it to you here from Westlake Village, California, where it is gloomy outside. You can see that in the background. Um, and we're going to get right into it. Yesterday, uh, we did discuss the crash. And what I really want to talk about is the opportunity today. I didn't really touch on that, but how do you find opportunity in volatility? And here's what I would say. Finding opportunity starts with understand, understanding you know, how the institutions are thinking, what they're doing, and, um, you know, because they make the big footprints in the charts. And that's why I don't look at the news. I don't listen to the media. I just look at the charts. And um, so we'll take a look at kind of how to identify, you know, some of the big footprints in Bitcoin's chart. And why do we want to know where Bitcoin's price is going? Well, it's the most influential asset in human history, and it's slowly eating away at the traditional financial system. And again, uh, whatever Bitcoin does, right, altcoins do more. That's the general rule of thumb. And the stronger altcoins, they tend to outperform Bitcoin. And, you know, what are altcoins? That's anything that is not Bitcoin. So again, uh, typically what I do is I use Bitcoin's price action as a thermometer for the entire crypto market. So starting out with the underlying market dynamics, uh, we like to keep track of one of them is called the, there's three of them. It's the fear and greed index, the open interest, and the global leverage ratio, and uh, a few others, but those are the main ones. So the fear and greed index, when people are fearful, it's time to be greedy. Currently, uh, fear and greed popped up from a 16 of extreme fear yesterday to fear at 28 today. Um, so we're still in the fearful zone, which is good. And I would expect we stay in the fearful zone for a few weeks before we put a bottom in, just like we saw over the summer. You can see from July, or sorry, May to July, Bitcoin, the fear chart, you know, was reading between 20 and uh, 20 and what is that about 24, putting in the low at 10, right? We hit a 16 yesterday. So I would expect we bounce around there for some time, get, a, get everybody really fearful because that's the time to be greedy. Um, and the next one, open interest, right? That's positions being put on long and short, you know, futures contracts. Basically, people putting bets on the books, right, with leverage. Currently, open interest is at 10 billion, right? Before the washout, it was at 15 billion. Now, it was at an all time high. We'd been talking about it, saying there's going to be a big move coming. And the other thing we follow is the global leverage ratios, which measures how much leverage people are using. For example, I don't know if you know this, you can get 10x leverage, 20x, 30x, 100x leverage. You can make bets on crypto like we've never seen before. And the leverage ratio, the idea is the higher the leverage, right? The more volatile the move, right? And it's di direction neutral. So uh, it just lets us know that a big move is going to happen um, when the leverage is higher. And it just fell from not 0.21% to not 0.17%. So, you know, leverage, again, we spoke about the washout yesterday uh, coming down. This is overall good for the market. And now we've seen all open interest, the global leverage ratios and the fear and greed index come down significantly. So this is good for a reset. So the question is, you know, when are the major lows going to be put in? And yes, you know, that's the opportunity, right? You want to buy the low and sell the high, right? And we did say yesterday, Bitcoin was very, very likely on the CME chart to get a bounce, I'll just put the CME uh, chart on here. And we said, yeah, very likely to get a bounce up and fill this gap in price, which was coming in at, call it 52,000. And we did fill that gap, right? But we did say if we got rejected at the 618, right, we would be looking for a move. And is that the 618? No, the 618's up here. That's on a four hour. So we haven't quite made it up to the 618. And that is why I'm postulating Bitcoin very well could pop back up to 53, 54,000. Um, however, if we do get rejected here below this yellow, you know, yellow 21, put in a lower high, um, I would expect that move to play out. And for, you know, at least on CMEs for uh, we us to test around 45,000, which 
that's the test we got over the weekend uh, for spot price action. So, you know, did I think that is likely? Um, yes, you know, to be frank, uh, I do think, you know, that is, you know, it, it, as long as we don't close a daily back above, uh, I believe it is, um, yeah, that pivot at uh, 54,000. So as long as we're closing dailies below there, I mean, looking for that, you know, that kind of area to fill out, you know, when a weekly candle closes like this, and I'll get rid of these fib traces right here. Um, and try and make this a little bit easier to see. Yeah, when you get a weekly closure like this, and it's a little bit easier seen on spot price action, but a big wick down like that, uh, below the yellow 21, you know, likely to take its time to dig itself out here. But that being said, look at the stock market getting a full recovery here today. And what I would say here is this thing is looking massively bullish. Um, and it, it had a full reversal, tested the highs right on the daily, sold off a little bit, but it looks like we're just going to pick it back up and make some new all time highs. And I would say a reversal in NASDAQ, you know, this is good for Bitcoin. And I would consider it a major buying opportunity when we use all these indicators together, right? All the underlying market dynamics, the leverage washout, the stock market, uh, the fear and greed index, right? Um, I'm looking for a major buying opportunity right now as the leverage or, or if we get, you know, one more downside move to fill in that get you know to fill back in and test around the bottom side of this triangle here kind of scare everybody else out of this market and so here's the pretty easy setup and um what i would do is, and here's the opportunity buying the dip right that's what you want to do is is to have the opportunity to buy a dip and we've said we're macro bullish on bitcoin as long as we're closing weeklies above forty three thousand, or call it forty two thousand on on spot price action so I put a limited order in somewhere in this region, maybe around 44,500. The point of failure, any kind of a two hour closure back below 43,000, which is coming in, you know, you could put it at 43,500 or 43,000, somewhere right around there. So why, why would I, why do I like this setup? Um, it's a pretty easy way to manage risk and the risk to reward is fantastic. If you get a bounce from, call it 45,000, back to the up to the top side of the range, that's a 42% increase. You can set your downside risk at four, five, 10%, whatever you're comfortable with. Again, this isn't financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. I'm just giving you what I'm looking at and how I'm kind of playing this. And I would consider that a major buying opportunity. And I would expect, you know, if that those orders get filled and we get a quick move back up to 54,000, right? And if you're a macro investor looking at Bitcoin over the next two to five years, I think it's worth taking a shot buying the dip. Why? We're 40% off the highs in a macro bull market. Absolutely worth taking a shot, in my opinion. And it's not financial advice. Again, another way is, you know, if, if another way to be looking at this would be on a daily and any kind of a daily closure back above our breakdown area on the spot price, right? Which is 53,800, call it 54,000. So any kind of a daily closure back above 54,000 and I'll, you know, immediately get bullish again, right? And um, and I'll look at this as a reversal and the ascending triangle to, uh, you know, essentially play out over the next 30 days. Um, another thing telling me, you know, there's another, it's a good reset. We had global exchange outflows, which measures how many coins are coming off exchanges over the past three days. Outflows have increased significantly, which tells me coins are coming off exchanges, right? People are buying the dip, putting it in a hot wallet or a hard wallet, and it's coming off exchanges. And again, let's talk about traditional markets again right now and kind of really what's going on in this market. And I just want to put this on a weekly so you can see what the NASDAQ has done, you know, since Corona, <laughs> call it flu virus dump time, right? And, you know, NASDAQ has gone up 134% since March of 2020. Not a bad move, right? Why is that? Why has the stock market gone up, you know, 145? That's, that's crazy. And, um, 
basically what we're looking at across all markets is a massive liquidity bubble which is perpetuated by extremely, extremely easy access to funds right now, right? Extremely easy financial conditions right now. So interest rates, they're extremely low. So borrowing money is the easiest money to borrow in the history of the world, right? It's the easiest time in history. The only way it could get easier, right, is if interest rates go negative, right? Where people, when the bank starts to pay you to take a loan, like I think they're doing in Europe. So on top of that, the Fed, Right, they're injecting massive untold amounts of money into the reverse repo markets each and every night. That does increase and it does essentially mean that all the money managers kind of they have to buy, right? The Fed is just dumping mark you know, free money into their hands, right? What are they what are they gonna do with it, right? You can't leave it in, in the bank at zero percent interest at their own bank. So it forces them to buy and the market to buoy up like we're seeing today and that's why, you know, you know, again, SPY here, taking a look at the S&P futures right here, grinding up against the high. Again, typically you get that little sell off. And then, um, I mean, this is looking bullish. You know, look at the weekly. Uh, weekly, we already had a tick above and that would confirm what's called, um, yeah, uh, it would be uh, two drives of Hidden bullish divergence, which, you know, again, that, that'll give you a nice move. And because of that, you know, um, because of that, overall traditional markets are still bullish, right? NASDAQ, SPY, all this stuff's rebounding, tech's rebounding. Um, because traditional markets are bullish, that allows a lane, right, or a vein for Bitcoin and cryptocurrency to do something similar as well. And, um, you know, again, I'll be looking for new all time highs on the stock market just based off of really today. If we can close a daily back, you know, anywhere above this, this high, but I, I, I'm pretty, pretty much in for confirmation and that's, you know, any kind of a daily back above 4,700 on the S and P. And I would look for new all time highs by the end of the year. Uh, now, short term and that's not bitcoin right <laughs> uh short term again a little pullback but could this little pullback right here play into bitcoin's price action i think absolutely and i need a sip of coffee i really need i really need some water but um so as nasdaq you know pulls back could bitcoin pull back also i think so and i do got another bit miss buster <laughs> i do have another myth buster for everybody out there People that say Bitcoin is a big hedge on the stock market. No, no, they're wrong. Uh, when you hear that, run away. Uh, Bitcoin is not a hedge against stocks. They're highly correlated, right? Based on history, if anything, they're more correlated uh, mostly to the downside and not always to the upside, to be fair. I do suspect we do see, uh, you know, again, new all-time highs for the stock market by the end of the year, not for Bitcoin. I'm talking about stocks, S&P and NASDAQ which does bode well for Bitcoin in quarter one. And why do I say that? Because all the hedge funds and the asset managers, that's when they start to rebalance their portfolios. And when there's, you know, they're gonna get new inflows, right? New money. And that's likely when they're gonna allocate to Bitcoin, which, you know, now has been quite popular for those big guys for some time now to do, right? So name a few, Ray Dalio, he said, I'd rather buy Bitcoin than own a bond. George Soros, right, who this, who said Bitcoin is the best hedge on inflation. And then you got John Paulson who said, you know, Bitcoin is going to be the fastest horse and uh, started out with 1% of his portfolio, just increased it by 500%, now has 5% of his portfolio allocated to Bitcoin and crypto. I'm not sure exactly what the ratio is, but again, uh, let's take a look at Bitcoin on the daily and we'll start off with the CME futures chart on the four hour and what do we have here uh, we you know came up filled the gap right gaps like to get filled putting in the first higher low right there and I would suspect respect the higher low and next play would be a higher high so any kind of a four hour closure you know call it above 51 
nine, and I'm looking for a quick move up to 54,000 to touch that green 55. Remember, on the other side, you know, in an uptrend, the green 55 is a good buy. In a downtrend, the green 55 typically a decent sell. Right? Depends on what time frame you are on. Um, so, uh, gap fill breakdown. And I did see this on the hourly. The hourly's been, you know, pretty flippy floppy here. So we kind of got an hourly range here between, you know, uh, call it uh, 52,000 and uh, 58. And I would say that would resolve the range, right? Any kind of an hourly above 52 is gonna give you the move up to 54 and any kind of an hourly below uh, 48.7 is probably going to give you that move back down to 45,000 right here. And that's the bottom side of the Bollinger Band. And that's, you know, measures volatility. And how does this coincide with spot price? So CME carries, futures price carries a premium over spot price. So if spot price wants to come down, or CMEs want to come down to 45,000, I would suspect that spot price wants to come somewhere around 42, right? Which is or 44, somewhere between 42 and 44, right? So it depends on how aggressive you want to be in setting your limit orders. Um, and what I like here on the weekly, and uh, you know, I did actually buy some on Saturday. Um, you know, I picked up some Bitcoin. I don't do a lot for my own stack these days, but you know, I had to take some fiat out of the bank and buy the dip, right? Anyway. I didn't get all my orders filled, but I suspect I will here over the next week or so. And these are fills for long-term potential price action, right? Um, and why do I like doing something like this? Not because it's 100% guaranteed to work out that Bitcoin is going to just bounce from here and V bottom out. Uh, but, but I like the risk to reward for a long-term trade. And what I mean by that is I just don't have to risk a whole lot. You know, if I put a buy order in at 43,700, right? I know really quickly where my idea was wrong, right? Any kind of a daily or week, daily closure back below 41,800, and I know I'm in trouble, right? So my downside risk versus my upside potential, which I believe would be a bounce to the top side of the range at least, right? That is a 49% increase, you get a bounce to the top side of the range. And uh, downside risk, you can set it 2%, 5%, you know, put a stop limit order in where you're comfortable. Um, and, uh, you know, this is, again, I don't have to risk a whole lot to figure out if I'm gonna be wrong, respectively speaking, towards, you know, the relative long-term gains in this case. And in this case, um, Again, what do we see here? The last weekly prior low right here at 43,000, right? And so what I would suspect is the weekly trend to continue and put in another higher low, right? And on a closing basis, as long as we are above 42,000 here, uh, then you just have another higher low and trend continuation. And um, you know, in Bitcoin's history, the 55-day exponential moving average has been an incredibly good buying opportunity. Um, and this is how I would say you find opportunity in volatility. Well, you have technical indicators, you follow the markets, you stay abreast of things, and um, you know you have a trading strategy, right? Which means you have a you know an entry point, an exit point, and then you have risk management. And uh, if you don't have a trading strategy, I don't recommend you do this. Uh, at all <laughs> um, and anyways um, what else do we have here so if uh, we test back down here and um, we do confirm a high low and I will imagine it's not gonna happen this week right but um, if we test down there and we confirm a higher low you will have you know two drives of hidden bullish divergence and that again is when price is making a higher low here's the low, low, right? However, RSI is making lower lows. And that typically on a weekly time frame is a very powerful time frame and could get you a bounce up to the, at least the top side of the range or the red 10 at a minimum, which is 57,000. Not, you know, again, it, so we do need to see a higher low on the weekly for that to happen. And 
these are the trades I like for the long-term trending trades. Um, so I hope this can help, you know, and you can put this in line with your own trading strategy. You know, again, volatility metrics. Um, one thing we like to do is take a look at volatility. And when we get below 20%, that means low volatility. We're in for an explosive move. Uh, the last two lows, this one back in October 2020, you can see uh, Bitcoin rallied up over 400%. So from 12,000 to 60,000, um, that was the last time we put in a real low on this thing on Coinbase. Um, we need a little further price extension to see better, uh, you know, to see it a little better. But the theory is, again, low volatility means high vol volatility is right around the corner. It's direction neutral. And I would say, based on this low read, we are in for a very explosive move coming soon. Um, so what else do we have? Uh, the monthly time frame here, which would be a lot better if you guys could all see everything. Let's see. Slow it down. Okay. So this is our monthly time frames. And on the monthly, we're still bullish as long as we're closing, you know, about this red 10 simple and uh, assuming the trend, higher lows, higher highs, right? Where would the next higher high come in? Uh, somewhere above 70,000. That would be very, very nice for Bitcoin. And keep in mind the monthly, we've got another, I think it was 23 days or something uh, until the end of the year. This year is closely, fastly approaching to all of us. So, um... Hope you guys are going to enjoy your holidays with your friends and your family. Anyways, um, so where would I kind of judge Bitcoin right now to see if we're going to go back down below 50,000? And what I would say is if I can get my screen to... Here we go. So... How would I be judging it to see if Bitcoin is going to be, you know, heading back to those regions and my orders are going to get filled. And now I would say this, right, you know, to be conservative on a four hour, right, any kind of a four hour closure back below 49,000, very likely retest the lows at 46, 45 with a small bounce and probably continuation to the downside. And, you know, we play out that idea. Um, however, uh, if you, you want to see me massively get bullish again, you know, we get a four hour closure back above 53.7. You know, I'd say still to be conservative, wait for a daily, right? Uh, four hour closure needs to get actually back above uh, 57,500. And that's where I'd, you know, start to get bullish again on, on a four hour. Um, so other than that, I hope this is helpful. I hope, you know, again, I'm just sharing with you what I'm thinking. Um, and what I'm doing and giving you my strategy and sharing how I plan to navigate this volatile market. Um, I do believe in the macro bull thesis right now that we've got another six to 12 months of upside. So, you know, buying the dips uh, might not be a bad idea if you want to pick up some Bitcoin. Um, and if I'm gonna give you my opinion on like the end of the year price prediction, um, you know, I'm gonna stick with what I said yesterday. I think it takes 30 days to put in a low minimum. And it's going to take some time. However, um, you know, again, where would my opinion a change drastically? A daily closure back above 54,000. And I'll add, you know, again, I don't think we're going to make a new all-time high until 2022. And that's just my opinion. Uh, you know, now we might get the Christmas rally you're hoping for, but I don't think it's likely, unfortunately. Um, but um, I'm here to give my straight-up opinion my honest opinion, not here to tell you it's going to the moon tomorrow. Um, you know, based on my research and what I'm currently looking at, you know, Bitcoin, traditional markets. Um, now, more about opportunity. Uh, we said Bitcoin does rule the market, right? So whatever Bitcoin does, altcoins do more. And this is not financial advice, just my opinion. You know, what I'm looking at for a few altcoins and a rule of thumb here is, you know, don't get married to the asset. It doesn't love you, right? So uh, what is your goal? You know, ask yourself that question. Is it short-term profit taking or long-term, you know, gains, right? Everyone has different strategies because these, you know, these altcoins are much, much more volatile. And well, you know, you, 
you can make a lot more money on one hand, you can also lose a lot more on the other hand and get completely wrecked. So, you know, please, please, please do your research. Don't just buy someone. Don't just buy something because someone on the internet said to buy it, right? Be prepared. Uh, you could lose your whole stack. Anyway, I'm not saying to buy any of these coins. I'm just telling you what I'm keeping my eye on. Um, and on my hot list, and I've got sand, mana, luna, gala. You can kind of see my little hot list on the side here. Um, and what am I going to pull up first? Sand here. And this is on a daily time frame. Looking a little droopy here. Um, so what I would say, again, is if Bitcoin wants to swipe the lows again, sand probably tags somewhere between, you know, 389 and uh, 438, right? And this is traditionally going to be a bouncy area along that green 55. And Bitcoin, if Bitcoin does bounce in step, like I think it would, I think it would be in a very attractive, you know, not only short-term buying opportunity, but long-term, you know, three to five year hold. Uh, but, you know, again, be pr prepared for downside risk because if this area does fail, well, first stop is three bucks and probably continuation to 223. So um, that's how I would be looking at that one. And next one on the list here, MANA, which uh, barely holding the breakdown level right there on the daily. And uh, what I would say here is probably gets a wick down to around 296, uh, maybe 315 in that blue box region. Uh, I'll just put a blue box there. And we'll just see how these blue boxes turn out. Um, would I put it lower? Honestly, I, 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 I might put it a bit lower to cover. That's quite a bit. Yeah, you know, I think if Bitcoin does take a run down to 45 or 42,000, I think definitely 230 will get tagged and that I'd probably I'd probably look at that as a pretty decent entry point, you know, as the all-time high and that was 580, uh, if you can buy at 50% of the high and still maintain the trend, right? We get a wick down there, that's what I'd be looking for and a closure back above 315, right, to confirm your daily uptrend and that would be, you know, all right, wouldn't be confirming a daily uptrend, but that would kind of be the first signal of a major reversal. Um, what else am I gonna keep an eye on here today? We've got Matic. Matic is absolutely destroying it today at $2.50. Uh, rallied off the lows, off the last dip here, almost 50%. Uh, now, is this the time to buy, you know, not financial advice, not a financial advisor. Typically, you don't want to buy on the all-time highs, but we are coming up against the all-time, the last, the prior all-time highs in 2021. And uh, this thing is macro bullish, right? So we just had a five-day closure above the topside Trollinger band, giving a resolution of the range here, which something like this here. And these things are likely to break at 75%. What do you know? We got the 75% break and the measure move on this is to the all-time high. So would I say that's likely over the next five days? Yeah, I'd say if not the next five days, 10 days. And then if that thing gets taken out, well, this thing could really get cooking. And if we want to use kind of a look at it from a FIB perspective, I wonder what target that would give us. So from the last five day consolidation, yeah, so that's the 2618, which typically sells off. There's the 312, right? Um, how can we get a little bigger of a measure move on this one? Anyways, you know, I think highly likely Bitcoin picks itself up here and doesn't want to go back to 45, but, you know, comes back up to 45,000. I can see this thing making a new tie and tagging probably three bucks, but probably a pullback from there. And, um, you know, again, typically you don't want to buy these things when they're that high. Uh, you want to buy them when they're low, right? So just something to keep an eye on, though. This is a popular uh, Ethereum competitor. And 
I think the last one was Luna here, and this one has been on a tear as well. And uh, Luna here is stopping out at the 2618 right now. So again, not something you'd want to buy right now. When it goes straight up like this, you typically want to buy the dips or the corrections. So any kind of a dip back down to 50, you know, 50 cents or even, you know, 40 cents would be a nice, nice opportunity. Do I think that's necessarily happening right now? No, uh, but you know, when Bitcoin, if Bitcoin wants to retest the lows, you know, a limit order in at 49 or 50 cents, I think could be attractive or 38 cents because this thing can get very volatile, very quick. If you look at this thing on a weekly, I mean, look at this thing. We can come all the way back down to 49 cents and touch the red 10 at any moment if you've looked at the volatility in this one. But the breakout to the upside is, you know, quite a bit higher, right? So the measure move up to the top there is going to be 47% higher than we're at today. And, um, you know, based on the weekly closing above the topside trolling band, I would say that, um, you know, could happen over the next few weeks or months. Um, definitely want to be keeping a close eye on that one. That's it for today, guys. I hope this was helpful. Hope you have a blessed, wonderful day. Take care. Signing out.